you ever wanted to create student generated quizzes, but struggled with reading handwriting and retyping a bunch of questions that they've written out on paper and pencil? I'm going to talk you through a couple different ways to automate this process using um, Google Forms, Google Sheets, and some plugins uh, for those things. Um, it is a little bit technical, so if this is something that's intimidating, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through every step of the process and show you what to do. So this is the example of one of the possible outputs you could have where students have answered questions in one form and then you have created a form, turned around and taken those answers, created a form from them that you can then send out to students as a quiz. I'm also going to show you a way to make a paper and pencil version if you just want to gather their um, answers and then print off a paper and pencil quiz incorporating their questions and answers to distribute to students. This could be something you use as part of a formal assessment. This could be something that you give to students as an informal sort of study guide type thing. Um, and honestly, I never was in the habit of using student generated questions in my classroom, partly because of the time intensive nature of it, of having to retype everything. Um, that they that they gave to me in addition to doing the editing and vetting we know we need to do and also partly because I was not impressed with the quality of their questions and answers sometimes but just like anything else that's a skill you need to practice these automated systems for gathering and then redistributing student questions and answers are only going to save you time in the long run if this is something you do regularly and students are only going to get better at identifying like the key components of information that do make good questions if we give them opportunities to do so in feedback. So if you're in on this journey, uh, join me and I'll show you how to do this. Let's go. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you have not already is you're going to want to create a Gmail account. You really need one associated with your information if you're going to be using Google Forms and Sheets like this. So if you haven't done that already, get in there. It's free and easy. Um, and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start a Google Form. So I just right clicked. Um, if you're on a Mac, you hold control. No, you hold, yeah, you hold control and click. I am on a Mac, but I'm using a mouse that has two buttons. Yeah, control click. And then the purple option is the one that's Google Forms. And I click on it and it makes a new form. Um, this one's automatically collecting emails already, but I don't really want it to do that necessarily. If you do, more power to you. Um, I don't want that. So see okay I'm gonna try reloading this is the first of I am sure many many problems I'm not immediately sure how to solve that we're gonna run into I'm going to make a lot of mistakes but that's just something that's inherent in this process it's not perfect and hopefully by seeing me goof up and freak out and not know how to solve my problems until I like calm down for a minute and do some light googling uh, these will be problems that you can avoid and maybe you learn something about my troubleshooting process that can improve what you're doing. Okay, so I definitely don't want to collect email addresses by default. Is there anywhere else that that's turned on? There. All right, let's see. Perfect. We got it without even any light Googling. So I'm going to call this November quiz and I think I started my test form with that as well I see it there so I'm just gonna call this two. I'm gonna leave that blank and then this is the initial form that you're gonna push out to students to get questions to them um, I'm gonna say remember you need to complete this form three times to get me three questions First question I'm going to have is their name. You might want to do first name, last name. Uh, I'm going to make it required. You can't do it on paper. I might as well do it here. And then I'm going to have their class period as well, just to, in case um, I need to sort by that in the Google Sheet that we're going to make. We're going to turn their form answers into a spreadsheet. 
So I'm going to do uh, multiple choice and I'm going to force them into picking. Yeah, let's let's add all of those. Okay. Three is out of order. That would bug me. Um, so the reason I do this is because if I leave it as just a blank that they can type in, some kid's going to put one, some kid's going to write the word one, some kid's going to write first period, and it's going to be harder for me to sort. Um, this way they all have the same options and so I can group easily if I'm doing that. Maybe more information than you needed. All right, so next I'm going to ask them to type your question. And I want to make sure to change this to a short answer. Okay. I'm then going to say answer choice A. That's a paragraph again, and that just means that they can give me an answer. It's probably worth calling it short answer here so they don't get too long. Um, but those are those are up to you. The only difference between short answer and paragraph is the number of characters that uh, the form will give you before it cuts you off. Um, and I'm not sure off the top of my head what those are. So now I can just duplicate and change this to answer choice B, duplicate, answer choice C, duplicate, answer choice D. Okay. Um, and that automatically made them all required because it was set on the one I was duplicating. That duplicate button is your friend. Um, but I'm just going to go back through and make sure everything on here is required before I check. And the way I know is that red star will appear. Let me get fancy. Oh, no, try again. That red star there is, um, shows up by questions that are required in there. Unless you have them selected, which is a little bit irritating. So now that I have it deselected, but the red star by name has disappeared, just a little, little annoyance. Um, so then I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to say that I want, um, when I send this to them, I want them to have the option to do it again. And I'm thinking this is not the right place to do that. I think I want to actually click on send up here in the corner. So you can send it by email, which makes sense if you're using an automated thing. I usually end up sending a link um, and I usually do a short link, even though their short link is pretty bad. So you can just copy that then. Um, I don't if you if you have a website that you use for your class you can embed this in your website um, but this isn't what I was looking for here I was looking for the option to what to do when the response is submitted hmm. responses I don't want it to email me every time a kid fills this out um, but if you do this is where you would do that under the responses tab. Settings is still not what I want. All right, there should be a way where you can turn it on that once a kid submits the form, um, it automatically like at the bottom says you've submitted your form, click to submit another response. And if I want the kid to fill this out three times to get me three questions, um, that's what I would want to do. But I'm struggling. It's not something that's super important to me today to figure that out, but if it's super important to you, let me know and I'll do a short video on how to do that once I figure it out myself. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch back to my other one over here that I've already put some responses in. Not that one. Just kidding. Um, I'm going to switch to a different one that I've already submitted responses to because you don't need to watch me struggle to come up with questions. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, this is the one that I want. Unit questions is what I called this one. The periods are different, but you can see these options are all the same. And I forgot to create a question on my form. So let's go back over here and fix that. So I also want the students to tell me which answer is correct. And this is really important, so I'm glad that I switched over there. Issue number eight I've encountered so far in this 
not yet very long video. I want this to be multiple choice and I want to give them the options here of A, B, C, D, or E. This is important later on. I don't want to leave this as a blank where they can write in which answer is correct because I need these answers to be uniform. This definitely is a required question as well. Um, if I left this as a short answer, some kids would put in the letters lowercase, some would put them in uppercase, some would just write out the correct answer again. All of those are going to cause me problems when I'm automating this system. So this is this is important to make sure this which answer is correct is um, just all the same for all kids. They're only going to have one option that they can choose that matches their correct answer. Okay, so heading back over here. I already have three responses that I filled in, just fake ones. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to responses here. And then this little green square is the create spreadsheet button. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new spreadsheet and we're gonna call this um, November demo. Okay, takes it a second, there it is. Um, I can only make this so big, so my apologies. I'm going to make everything that I'm showing you be larger um, when we get in there. I'm going to add a few columns to get started with. You can see that it's auto-populated the timestamp when the kid filled it out, the kid's name, what period they're in, and then these answers here. Their question, answer choices, and which answer is correct. You can, if you want to, proofread this and, and check for accuracy now, just using the spreadsheet, or you can wait until you are exporting it where it's a little bit easier to sort of read through it like it will look um, on the quiz or on the test itself. So that's entirely up to you um, what you want to do for that. So as I said, we're going to make some new questions. Um, uh, the first one I'm going to put in is question type. This is only going to matter if you're wanting to take this and then create a new Google form for it. The plugin that we'll use for that uh, requires the question type column and it's just easier for me to put that in now so I don't have to um, worry about bumping columns later. Not a big deal though. Uh, the next thing I want is question number and for this I'm just going to do our first formula. The first block, the first cell here, I'm going to put equals one. Um, and let me zoom in a little bit. It's not going to be great. My apologies, but we'll get there. Okay, so for question one, I'm just going to put equals one, and that displays the value of one. Okay, this next one, I'm going to put equals, and it's auto filling for me, uh, K2, which is the cell that I have one in, plus one. Google Sheets is smart. It knows what I want to do, and so it's going to do this for me. If I hit tab, that's going to give me two. I click on this cell. I don't know if you can see this, but there's that little, uh, little tiny blue square that shows up in the corner of the cell there. We're going to click on that and we're going to drag it down this column for however many answers we have. I'm going to assume that we're going to get 100, which is not divisible by three. So I guess we're going to assume 99. Um, and this is just for if you're going to do the uh, option of having the kids do a paper and pencil test. Um, this is going to allow each of the test questions to be numbered. And so that's why we have this here. So you're not probably going to use both question type and question number, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have it in there. It's really whatever you want to do. Okay, now what I want to have happen is I want to be able to create an answer key as well. Um, and so again, this is just for the paper and pencil version. So if you're, you know that you just want to send this out as a Google form, you can stop here. Um, I don't think anything of the rest that I'm going to show you in this video is useful for you. If you know that you just want to take this spreadsheet and turn it around into a new Google form. So you can, you can break here and head off to that video. If you do want a paper and pencil test and you do want an answer key that's more than just these letters, again, not necessary, I'm probably being extra here, um, you don't have to hang around for the rest of this. Uh, you can just take that as your answer key. But I kind of feel like I'm going to need this at some point down the road where I see the words. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. You don't have to go with me on this part of the journey if you don't want to. So. It took me a while to think about this, 
Um, and I found a solution that works. It's not a very elegant solution. I don't love it, but I'll share with you my solution and then maybe you can remix this and show me a better way to do this. So I'm gonna put four columns in that are correct A, correct B, correct C, correct D. Okay, oh, I need a new column here. Why is that not automatically happening for me? Okay, so I'm just right clicking, control clicking on a Mac, inserting a column to the right. And then this column is going to be called which is correct. No, just kidding. This is going to be correct answer. And I'm going to put an exclamation point just to kind of remind myself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a formula in these boxes that checks um, this against what the answer is in the right column. So if the answer is D, it's going to pull in what's in column H, which is the answer D column. If the answer is C, it's going to pull in the answer from the G column. Okay. Again, it's not a pretty solution, but it's one that's working right now, and that's all that I need. So here's my formula. I'm going to put equals if, and then a per, a, yeah, a open parent. Now I need a logical expression, which basically is going to be something that's evaluating a cell in this case. So which answer is correct is in column I, and I'm in row two right now. So if I2 uh, equals, and then I'm going to put in quotes A, because remember, even though it looks like I'm typing in correct B, because it lined up weird, I'm actually in L2, which is correct A. So what this is saying is check H, check I2 and see if I2 equals the capital letter A. It's in quotation marks like that and double quotes matters. It has to be double quotes, not single quotes. Um, it's checking that and it's going to do something if that value is true and if that value is false. So if that value is true, I want it to tell me what answer choice A was. So going back over here, answer choice A is in column E2. So if answer choice A, I want it to output E2. If it's false, if I2 does not equal um, A, I want it to output nothing in correct A. So I'm just going to put two, uh, two quotation marks together and one, one, two sets of two quotation marks, so four, I guess. Um, and that's going to output nothing in that cell. I don't want to space in between there. It's going to mess me up later. It's fine. That's not what I want. Oh, I wish that I had paid attention when it said autofill. So that's mistake number 87 now. Uh, but it's not a big deal. If you do see that flash on your computer and don't immediately hit enter, um, it will autofill that down the column. And what you'll notice, um, is, and again, it's not the end of the world if you don't do that, it's just slightly less convenient. You can do that same trick as before and grab that little blue square at the corner and drag it down. You'll notice when the value populates here, it's going to say um, change to I3 and E3. So every time I pull this formula down a row, it's hopping into the row that I am and changing those values. So if you look at it up here, uh, because I'm in row four, it's saying row four. So it's it's smart enough to do that part. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that down. Didn't actually grab the corner. That would be helpful. Um, this is not looking good yet because I picked a column that's empty. How about let's hop over to a column that's not empty. It's going to be almost the same expression. So I'm going to copy it and then paste it into C because I know that I've got some right answers in C. Now you'll notice that it's still exactly what it was in that column, which actually I'm a little bit surprised by. Um, I thought it would have shifted over, but that's okay. I didn't really want it to. So because I'm in the correct C, the first thing I'm going to change is this value is going to become C. Um, and it's still looking in I2, which is what I want. I want to see if I2 is the letter C. 
but the column I want it to pull from is no longer E2. The column I want it to pull from for answer C is G. So I'm going to change this to G2. If your spreadsheet is set up with different columns than mine, you're just changing the letters. Oh, and I did it again where I didn't let it autofill. It's annoying. Okay, but you can see it worked this time because I had answer C for three and four. It's pulling the thing from column G, which is exactly what I want. Is there a reason we're not going over here? Okay. So just to give you that column one more time, and I'm going to show it this way because oh, no. I like the, um, you know, I like, I like the colors in there. It helps me. So we're in column N. We're in row three. If I3 equals C, and that's where the kid picked one of those radio buttons on the form um, that says, that said, is the right answer A, B, C, or D? So if column I3 has a C in it, look at column G3 and pull that answer in here. And if it doesn't, leave it blank. And you see it's working because it's not pulling in anything except for those two questions that are there um, that have it in, in cell, that have C as the correct answer. Okay. I'm going to really quickly go through and mimic these same things, these same formula, but just slightly adjusted for B being the correct answer and D being the correct answer. Um, so just bear with me while I do that. I'm going to copy and paste again. I think I know. Oh, no, I don't know. So this changed it to H2. I've changed it back to I2. This time it's going to be B. And I think when it changed it, that F2 is actually the correct column for answer B. Yeah, answer B is going to be in the F column. I'm pointing it on my screen. That's not helpful. Um, and so that should be good. I'm going to hit enter. This time I knew it was coming and I'm going to hit um, autofill. And it just filled it all the way down. As opposed to over here where it didn't. And now for some reason it's slightly gray. Doesn't matter. Just a little weird. Okay. So again, it changed it this time when it hadn't before. So I'm going to change this back to I2 because that's where my correct answer is. This time it's going to be D. Uh, and I think H2 might be the right answer. H2 is my D. Yeah, absolutely. Except I clicked off of there now, so it didn't let me autofill. I'll drag this down. I'm not sure why that gray thing's happening. Don't really care, though. All right, so now this, this was all just to get ready to do this column P over here, which is correct answer exclamation point. Um, I don't want to have to mess with this, but I couldn't think of a more elegant way to do this. So again, show me, please. I'm not an Excel wizard at all. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to combine the values that are in columns L through O and have that be the value in this column here under correct answer. This, the four rows where I was pulling the answers over were just set up so I could do this. This part's easy. I just click on the cells that I want. Remember, keep them all in the same row so that when I autofill down, it'll um, change the values by one each time. And then click on the next cell. So I'm just saying for this column, display everything in the same row as the cell that I'm on in columns L, M, N, and O. Because a or because three of them are going to be completely blank like not even having a space all you're going to see is the correct answer in this correct answer didn't turn it gray for some reason no clue why that's where we are okay so at this point my um, spreadsheet is set up and so I'm going to stop here and let you choose which path you want. You could set it up as a Google form and I'll have a video for that. You could set it up as a just print out paper and pencil test, um, set that up. Either you could do both if you're feeling like you just want to see what your options are. Both of them are going to involve um, installing add-ons to Google Chrome. So if you aren't already using Google Chrome, I recommend that you follow. I would guess that there are other 
plugins for other browsers, but that's not what I'm going to show here. Um, and so to make sure that you're doing it the right way, or to make sure that you're, you're seeing what it's going to look like for you, I recommend getting the Chrome browser if you don't already. Um, both of these uh, extensions that we're going to use, these add-ons, are um, things that are going to require permission to view things in your Google Drive, write new things in your Google Drive, and delete things in your Google Drive. That's something that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. So I uh, made a dummy account, like I made a Gmail account that only has access to the things that I'm wanting to use these extensions for. And so when we come back from the video, I'm going to be in incognito mode so I can still be logged in on my regular account over here. Uh, but I will be logged in on the dummy account in my incognito window so that there's there's limited damage if one of these companies ends up getting hacked and someone gets into their system and like finds a way to delete everything in my Google Drive. I don't think that's very likely. I trust the companies that are here um, that I'm using products from, but I don't necessarily trust anyone who might be able to nefariously get access to their system. So. Maybe I'm paranoid, maybe it's a little over the top, but if you're feeling paranoid like me, make a fake Gmail account and just work with it on there. Um, if you have any issues with that, just let me know. And I do have a video about making a fake Gmail account. Not fake, it's real, but a, one that has limited access to your Google Drive. Um, if I had to pick one of the two, I like Autocrat better, and that's the one that's gonna be the paper and pencil test uh, version. So that's the one that I would choose. Uh, the other one, Form Builder, is kind of new to me, and so uh, there's going to be a lot more mistakes in that one that we're going to work through together because that is part of learning. All right, see you soon.